Okay, welcome to our FAQ part 2 for the Nuvi uh, 200 series of satnavs from Garmin um, from www.sairaday.co.uk What we're going to be looking at today is some more latitude and longitude uh, functions you can get out of your satnav, especially for using uh, for geocaching or hiking or if you need to you need to pinpoint a, a position on the map. I got a great email from a guy called um, Sue in Toronto, Canada, who wanted to know a lot more information about how we could pull latitude and longitude information out of the sat nav because it's not obvious in the manuals how to do it, but we're going to go through and show you how to do it today and also we're going to show you some geocaching stuff as well. So let's zoom in first. So you get a good view of the device. Okay, so first up, if you um, wanted to um, navigate to a uh, location via um, latitude and longitude. It's that simple, you would just go menu, uh, where to, press the down arrows, coordinates, and you can enter your coordinates there. Um, if the coordinates are in a different uh, format, just press the format button, and as you can see, you've got the different, different ways of putting in latitude and longitude. The one I've got there is probably the most common one that comes up on the geocaching sites and things like that. And you would just say next, and go and then that would take you to a point just as if you'd put an address in. However, you might really be using this mode if you were on foot so it's really important that once you get close you then change it to uh, something called pedestrian mode um, which means that the unit will then uh, ignore the highway code so it'll when you're on foot obviously you can go down wrong way one, one way streets the wrong way so you press the settings go into system go into usage and we make sure that pedestrian is um, is selected and that way we can find a latitude and longitude in a in a in a town or a built up area somewhere where there's um, where there's roads but it could well be you're trying to navigate to somewhere um, where you've got latitude and longitude and it's not on a road um, it could be out in the countryside you could be looking for a geocache location or something like that it's very important now we change it to off-road mode because if you don't it'll always try and take you down the nearest road so let's go into settings and then what we do this time we go into navigation and we go into route preference you see that at the top and then we make sure it's on off-road mode like mine is at the moment so what will happen then is when you put in a, a target coordinates it'll take you straight there as the crow flies so let's just have a quick look at that so what we'll do We'll say where to, and I've just I've saved a latitude and longitude position in here, lat long. So we'll press that, and we'll say go. And then what we s you can see on the screen there, you see this little car, but you can also see this purple line that's zooming off into the distance. So it's not going to try and take me down any roads. It's just going to say go in this way. Obviously, when you're on in a town, you wouldn't navigate like that because you can't walk over people's back gardens. But when you're out in the countryside, geocaching or trying to find a specific target that will uh, take you there. The way it works is there's no compass inside the Nuvi. Um, it works out the bearing you should be heading on once you start moving. So once you start walking it can then work out which direction you're facing in and then point you in the right direction. When, when the sat nav is operating in this mode some people prefer to have it in top down view. So if we press menu, go into settings and then we're going to map. What we can then do see where it says map view we can then change that to north up for example so let's see what that looks like and there we go and then as you're th that will always stay north up and you just just follow the line I, d I don't think that's that useful the best one to really to use in this sort of case is um, either 3d or track up the reason for that is as you're walking along you just make sure that this purple line moves around to the top of the screen and follow it around that but 3D 3D mode works uh, works really well so we'd use that out in the country um, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to put it into demo mode and show you some more features as well so if we just stop that route and then we go into settings system GPS simulator on so that's great so we've shown you how to navigate to our latitude coordinates so we'd go somewhere like that go right, let's choose somewhere else there we go uh, 
settings, just make sure we're in system pedestrian. off-road. Okay, so where to? Favourites. That's your longitude. Go. And this is the sort of thing you'd see as you're walking along. You would just orientate yourself and keep walking so that it's um, the purple line, purpley pink line is pointing up to the top of the screen. Isn't that great? So the next thing, next question I really got from um, from Stu was how do you how do you know your current uh, latitude and longitude? Uh, position. Well, that's um, that easy. You just press the press the car, and as you can see, it comes up with your latitude and longitude. And what you can then do is you save that. So we say save yes, and let's call it I don't know test one. So we've now saved that as test one. Let's just stop this route. Um, but then you get home and you think, oh, I wonder what was that latitude and longitude of that position? Maybe you've placed a geocache or you, you just need to record it. Now the way you can bring it up is if you go where to, favourites, press test one, it doesn't come up with any of the details of um, where you are uh, with the latitude and longitude that points of interest. It looks like you've lost it, but you haven't. All you do is you say show map, set location, Make sure you're in um, demo mode when you're doing this. And if we view the map, it's automatically taking us to that location. So if we press the car again, there's the latitude and longitude position. So that's how we can pull up latitude and longitude of a favourite. But you can also do with this with, with any of your favourites, any of the points of interest. So if we go to where to, food hotels, transit, I don't know, let's find somewhere. Let's have a look at this place. So if we go Southampton International Airport, show map, set location, then back, 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 view map, press the car, and that gives us the latitude and longitude of that point of interest. And we can do that with any of the addresses we've stored in the favourites as well, or any any address you put in as well. So say you wanted I don't know, let's, let's do a, let's put an address in. Um, here we go, where should we go? Um, oh, spelling right. Go to Downing Street, show map, set location, back, 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 view map. There we are in London, press the car, and that's the latitude and longitude of Downing Street. That's really cool, isn't it? Really easy. Um, the other thing is, you may want to record the, the uh, location of somewhere or find out the latitude of long longitude of somewhere that you don't know about um, somewhere on a map say how, how do you do that well that's dead easy as well and we I've just shown you how to do it by putting an address but let's say you didn't know the address what you then could then use you could then use a map browser now again you've got to be in demo mode and then all you do is zoom out if it's in 3d mode just drag your finger across the screen once we're in this mode as you can see we can zoom out and then you can use your finger to go anywhere, anywhere we want, and we say, I don't know, let's say there. You know, maybe we're surveying electricity pylons and we need to know the latitude and longitude of this particular place. We're not going to do that. So press that, we've got a little arrow. Set location, car's there. Back, press the car, and then we've got the latitude and longitude, which you can then save to refer to. At a, at a later date. So there we go. So as you can see, it's dead easy to, to pull this latitude and longitude information out of your sat nav, even though at first glance it seems um, seems quite a complicated thing to do. Um, and that's, that's it really for getting latitude and longitude out. We've shown you how to navigate to um, 
a latching longitude just driving. We've shown you how to do geocaching where you're going to navigate to a latching longitude and remember to put it in off-road mode. We've shown you how to store your current uh, latitude and longitude position and then how you can then pull that information out at a later date to feed into the internet or something like that and um, we've shown you how to hunt on the map in order to pull up latitude and longitude for a particular place and we've also done it for points of interest so you can pull up latitude and longitude of any address that you enter into your sat map I think that's really really cool so let's just um, let's just let it do a little demo of off-road geocaching so here we go so when you're out there geocaching this is roughly what you'll see in top-down view just following that that pink line or you can change it back into 3D mode and that's what you'll see so you can imagine you follow the pink line as the pink line drifts off in sort of either direction you then just change your heading to meet up with that obviously the critical thing to remember as well is once you've found your geocache um, actually no, the really important thing is when you get out of the car or wherever you're starting make sure you store that as a favourite in your device because there's no trackback feature on something like um, the newbie um, so you need to know where you park so as soon as you get out of the car and you get a satellite lock store that as a favourite give it a name like car position or something like that so that when you find your geocache you can find your way back because otherwise you can find where you are and then you wouldn't be able to find the car park afterwards so there you go you can use your, 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 your newbie to find that lungs just be really aware when you drive it using it um, out of the car is that it isn't waterproof it isn't shot proof um, the battery on a full charge probably lasts at the most about four and a half five hours but I wouldn't count on that um, one of the tricks you can do to get the battery to last longer you could turn the sound off um, and another really good thing you can do is go into settings go into display turn the brightness right down and the battery will last a lot long, longer there but you know you're only really talking about casual local uh, use away from a power supply really with something like this because unlike something like a Garmin e-trex you can't replace the battery so if you get somewhere and the battery goes flat you've had it you know you, you, you're going you're going to be navigating by the by the by the sun and then the stars and the moon so there we go if you've got any other questions just snip over to uh, sorryday.co.uk go on to the contact uh, part of the website and send us an email if you've got any other questions that need answering okay thanks for watching that was our Garmin Nuvi 200 series FAQ part 2